there are very good correlations between swinging exit velocities and overall swinging speeds and pressing strength. This makes a lot of sense because the pec and other muscles involved with pressing have very high levels of activation when we are swinging an implement. And what we know when looking at these muscle groups is that the muscle groups do not only have to be very forceful or recruit very high threshold motor units, but they also have to activate at very high speeds or display high levels of rate coding. So a quick explanation here of motor unit recruitment and rate coding. Basically, the central nervous system interacts with the brain that is transmitting a signal to the central nervous system saying, hey, we want to recruit X amount of motor units because we want to be very forceful. So then the central nervous system will respond and activate an appropriate threshold of motor units in order to get the job done. So to put it simply, if we want to lift a very heavy weight, uh, then we are going to recruit very high threshold motor units. These high threshold motor units are attached to a lot of type 2 muscle fibers or those very fast twitch muscle fibers that produce a lot of force. And then if we wanted to be uh, maybe a little bit more delicate with our movement or perhaps we wanted to lift a very light load very slowly, then we would recruit low threshold motor units that are more attached to those type 1 muscle fibers that are more uh, sort of able to have very high levels of endurance whenever doing an activity. Well, what rate coding is, is it's the motor unit firing rate. So the central nervous system, instead of just uh, sending a signal to the muscle groups and those motor units to fire, it's sending a signal that's extremely fast in order to get the job done. So what we see when doing explosive or plyometric exercises, like swinging and throwing, jumping, medicine ball throws, those movements have very high levels of rate coding involved where that signal is being sent instantaneously, very fast. Whereas if we're doing more of a slow, heavy weight training exercise, that rate coding is gonna be much slower because we know we have to create a lot more force with the movement. Remember, the force-velocity relationship shows that as force increases with a movement, we can create so many more actin and myosin cross bridges to create that force and then velocity is going to decrease with that movement because we're taking so long to produce a lot of force. Whereas with a plyometric exercise, a swing or a throw, something like that that's very fast, we're not gonna be able to uh, create as much overall force even though we are gonna produce as much force as possible in that very short window. Understanding all of this, now we can begin to correlate what exercises might match up really well with swinging and throwing velocity. Obviously, they are going to be movements that are rotational in nature, uh, mimicking the swing and the throw with similar muscle groups that will be involved with uh, swinging and throwing, such as the pec, the lat, the hip extensors, but also having a pretty high velocity characteristic to those movements because we know that whatever force can be produced in something like a medicine ball throw or a chest pass or a jumping movement will be similar to the amount of force that's needed when throwing and swinging. So it makes sense that exercises like the chest pass, medicine ball shot put throw, exercises like that that are higher speeds are better indicators of swinging exit velocities than say something like a heavy bench press. So when looking at the numbers, I have 10 athletes who have recorded 100 miles per hour exit velocity or higher off of a T. Um, and though this is not an end all number by any means, it is a pretty good number to show off in showcases. It's probably a top percentile for a lot of high school and college kids. It's a really good benchmark to have. So with these guys that could hit 100 miles per hour exit velocity or higher, six out of those 10 have a 225 pound bench press or more. And each of the athletes that I have trained in the past who could bench press 225 pounds or higher, only one of them could not achieve an exit velocity of 100 miles per hour or harder. And this makes sense because 
with that very, very high level of motor unit recruitment that you could have in order to achieve a 225 pound bench press, you would likely be able to activate the chest at a really high level when swinging and throwing. But I think what's happening here is it does not translate quite as well over to throwing velocity because we know throwing velocity goes through such a large range of motion in order to be successful. You have to ex uh, display s extremely good levels of external rotation at the shoulder, horizontal abduction at the shoulder, and if you have a very good bench press, what happens a lot of times is these athletes may lose a little bit of pec mobility, and if that's the case, then they might not be able to display huge levels of layback when throwing, and that might not be able to uh, translate very well to throwing velocity, whereas with swinging exit velocities, you don't need that high level of mobility at the pec, so you could pretty much make it as big and strong as you want, and you're probably going to have really good results in terms of transferring pretty well over to swinging speeds. But then we also have to run into that uh, sort of problem with rate coding, whereas getting a really, really big bench press maybe isn't going to be the best thing for rate coding. It probably won't impact rate coding all that much because a bench press happens at such slow speeds. So what I think might be happening there too is that the pec uh, it has very, very high levels of rate coding when throwing a baseball, and it probably responds better to other styles of training rather than just bench pressing all the time. Um, whereas maybe swinging uh, velocity does not in involve quite as high levels of rate coding when activating the pec muscles. So perhaps there are uh, better correlations there between a heavy bench press and swinging exit velocities rather than throwing velocities. Just thinking of how the pec works when we're swinging, I can really see that there really is not going to be huge levels of range of motion involved with the swinging action in comparison to the throwing action. Really, the, what the pec is doing when swinging is it's just transferring energy into the implement that you're rotating. And if you can kind of keep that implement uh, rotating along that center of axis as you're rotating along with very explosive pecs, you're probably going to have a pretty good ability to swing an implement very fast. Whereas looking at the baseball, how the baseball gets really far away from the midline there, um, the limb that's throwing the ball really has to be activated fast when going from peak layback into internal rotation and all of that. So if you can activate those muscles super, super fast, you're probably going to have a better chance of being able to uh, transfer energy into throwing. So to put it simply, what I see when looking at the numbers is that three pound medicine ball chest pass distance and three pound medicine ball shot put throw velocity correlates really well with baseball throwing velocity and correlates pretty well with swinging exit velocities. But when looking at those heavier medicine ball throws and obviously heavy pressing, there seems to be less and less of a good correlation going along with throwing velocity, but there's still a very strong correlation with swinging exit velocity. So taking a final look at the last numbers that I've taken here with athletes, pretty much every athlete who can medicine ball chest pass 60 feet or further has a pretty good chance of being able to have a very good swinging exit velocity. Um, all those guys have very explosive chest, but the ones who could take the six pound medicine ball th and throw it at 45 feet or further, all could hit 100 miles per hour exit velocity or further. So there's definitely a good sort of mix of explosiveness and overall force production happening there that needs to happen at the pack in order to transfer very well to swinging exit velocities. Of all the movements that I have tracked, the medicine ball shot put throw and the medicine ball rotational scoop toss seem to match up best with swinging exit velocity. So it's no, uh, no surprise there that the ones who have the highest rotational scoop toss uh, scores with the three pound medicine ball and six pound medicine ball all were able to achieve the highest exit velocities of the guys that I tested. 
and of the athletes I tested in the top percentile, the top five guys with the medicine ball shot put could all do a, uh, uh, could all achieve about a hundred miles per hour exit velocity or higher with their baseball bat. 